Um, Charlie, it's yours. Please take it away. My pleasure to introduce our third speaker for today, David Schwab. Uh, David, please tell us about your living histories. Thanks very much for the invitation. Um, so, so David Lubinsky and I, I think, made sort of opposite decisions in, in emphasis, and and uh, my talk will be almost entirely uh, about people. So, expect a lot of photos um, of people. Um, there were a few experiences I had growing up that that sparked my interest in physics as a kid. Um, the first was discovering uh, musical modes um, and you know how certain major and minor scales were were, were the same patterns but, but with different different emphasis. Um, then I found a book on special relativity in my parents' basement, and I remember sitting there thinking about space time and how you know this is this is what I'm going to do with my career. Um, my interest in physics and math uh, in high school was was cultivated by by really fantastic teachers, um, Mr. Gosser and Mr. Bascom. Um, at one point, Mr. Gosser, uh, the calculus teacher, uh, t told me that his his full name was Greenbrier Ferdinand Benton Purdue Rubidoux Gary Lee Gosser, and um, that, that sort of communicated to me that, that math could be, you know, whimsical and, and creative and not just grinding problems like we, we had to do in class. So um, I grew up not not far from, from NIST and uh, spent a few summers uh, doing database development. Um, and I'm proud to say these, these databases are uh, still up 20 years later, um, but, but building these databases full of measurements I didn't understand um, left me driven to, you know, create knowledge myself. And so I, I began my uh, my scientific life in earnest at, at Cornell as an undergraduate, um, where I developed an obsession with with quantum foundations. Um, I had the good fortune to be at Cornell. I, I believe the first year David Merman uh, taught his uh, quantum computing course, which later became a book. Um, and the way he approached problems with a mix of, of rigor and humor uh, was incredibly appealing to me. Um, but I was much more interested in entanglement than anything in Ashcroft and Merman. And it was only later that I developed an interest in uh, appreciation for many body physics. Um, I think it's also worth emphasizing the role that, that friends and peers play in our upbringing. So on the left is, is my good friend, Gabriel Plunk, who's one of those critical people for me. And we, by chance, went through high school, college, grad school, and postdoc at the same institutions. Um, he's now a plasma theorist. And having a close friend with a complementary perspective, uh, but from an outside field, has certainly sculpted um, the way I think. So for, for two summers during uh, my undergraduate, I, I worked at what was then the, the IQI at Caltech. Uh, and the first summer I worked um, on, a, on a quantum foundations problem about whether all mixed state, uh, mixed entangled states violate some bill, bill inequality. And we didn't answer that, but we, we managed to publish a PRL, which was, which was a really thrilling experience. And the second summer I tried to make a dent in uh, the non-abelian hidden subgroup problem. And as to be expected, I got exactly nowhere. Um, and I was a bit demoralized and decided that, that quantum computing perhaps uh, wasn't for me. Um, but I, I didn't know what was for me. Um, one thing I learned at Caltech was that I, I liked the weather in Southern California much more than Ithaca. Um, so I, I went to UCLA unsure of what I wanted to study. Um, eventually, uh, Sudip Chakravarti um, recommended I read something something by Ken Wilson, probably Wilson and Kogut, I don't remember. Um, but it, it was a revelation and I was swept up by, by collective phenomena. Um, I ended up doing a, a sort of bimodal PhD that was like 80% uh, soft matter biophysics and 40% hard condensed matter theory. Um, it wasn't easy, ju easy juggling these two very different, different subjects, but, but Sudeep and Robin, as well as my other mentors, Alex Levine uh, and Joe Rudnick, um, you know, made it possible. Um, I learned an incredible amount of many body physics from, from Sudeep. Um, um, and in biophysics, you know, one, one day, uh, Jack Feldman, a neuroscientist, um, came to give the physics colloquium uh, about his, wor his work on inspiratory breathing rhythm generation uh, in the pre bussinger complex of the medulla. And I went to, to Robin afterwards and said I was interested in, in modeling the system to tackle its pattern generating mechanisms. Um, and he and Alex picked up a bunch of neuroscience textbooks and we learned neuroscience together. Um, it, was, it was really great fun to learn a new subject with the people I looked up to. Um, and there was also a, a wonderful sort of joint group meeting on biophysics with, with, with Alex Robin and Dolores Bozovic and John Miao and others um, where students were exposed to a, a great diversity of research. I also had the opportunity to visit Jonathan Widom at Northwestern 
uh, to collaborate on a project modeling micro first order transitions in sequence dependent positioning of nucleosomes uh, in graduate school. And John was, of course, a renowned scientist. Um, but when I came to visit, he spent so many hours with me um, talking about science, the importance of a good paper title, all sorts of things. And he really treated me more like a colleague than, than a student. And this was the first time I, I really felt like a, truly felt like a scientist. So during graduate school, I discovered the work of, of Bill Bialik and, and like so many others became fascinated with general principles in which uh, information theory plays a central role. Um, and so Bill had organized this, a summer school uh, at Boulder in 2007, which, which I attended. And I was exposed to a, to a new landscape of problems um, because back in 2007, we didn't have YouTube lectures on, on any topic you, want, you wanted to study. Um, and I met so many extraordinary colleague, colleagues, many of whom I still interact closely with uh, today. Um, one of those on the right uh, was Pankaj Mehta, uh, who became an extremely close friend and, and collaborator. Um, I, th I think Yane emphasized in his talk some months ago um, to work with, with people you love. Um, and indeed, Pank Pankaj and I, you know, uh, in, in our work have, have synergized in, in, in ways where we come up with ideas that are really really the product of, 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 of both of our creativities. Um, and we wrote lots of papers together on, on many topics. Um, so, so many of the lectures at the Boulder Summer School had at some point been th through Princeton and I was so excited by this work that I managed to find my way um, to a postdoc at Princeton. Um, I, I worked um, with, with the incredible Ned Wingreen um, and even though we um, we only wrote one paper together. He taught me so much about what it means to, to do science as your job. Um, and, and Princeton afforded incredible autonomy and I, I sparked numerous collaborations with Pankaj, many others, Ilya Nemanman, Vijay Balsarmani and so on. And um, while I was at Princeton, I became interested in machine learning, not as a tool for fitting biological data, but in and of itself. And neural nets seemed to me to be the next frontier in the study of collective phenomena. Um, at the time, though, neural networks didn't have the best reputation in physics, and um, when I wanted to attend a 2012 summer school on deep learning, organized by Jeff Hinton, Jan LeCun, and, and Yashir Bengio, I, I went surreptitiously and paid my own way to not evoke raised eyebrows. Um, it was a really exciting time in machine learning, around the time of AlexNet, where you, you, you couldn't really ignore neural net networks anymore. Um, but I, I was a postdoc and wanted to make sure I got a faculty job, so I didn't make the, the leap to working full on, on machine learning. Um, so I, I took a position at Northwestern um, in the physics department for a few years, and there I was I was very lucky to have John Marco down the hall uh, as a senior me mentor, um, as someone who has su successfully navigated physics and biology through his entire career. His advice was, was invaluable, um, but the person I really learned the most from uh, was Stephanie Palmer. Um, she had a few years of experience already as faculty and imparted so much of what she had learned to me. Um, but really more importantly than that, we discussed scientific ideas, often at the interface of neuroscience and machine learning, research directions, concrete and, and moonshotty um, that really continue to animate uh, my work uh, to this day. Um, and then finally, a few years later, um, uh, Bill Bialik recruited me back to the East Coast to help establish the initiative for the theoretical sciences at, at the, the Graduate Center. And, and the promise and potential of a, of a truly interdisciplinary theory institute was, was irresistible. Uh, and working with Bill academically and administratively uh, has really been, been an amazing experience. Um, and together with the Center for the Physics of Biological Function, um, we've had incredibly lively symposia on everything from information flow and chemotaxis to collective behavior in neurons to, to, to flu. Um, and, and here, my interest in machine learning, I guess now dubbed AI, um, really blossomed and became my primary focus. Um, you know, I, th these systems are now so complex and exhibit such interesting and sophisticated behaviors that, that I believe they really demand a serious scientific, scientific effort to understand them. Um, and this is also the phase of, of a career dominated by, by working with students and postdocs. And, you know, there's too many to show here, but, it, you know, I'm incredibly grateful to have had the chance to work with uh, and, and learn from uh, a, a really remarkable group of young people. That's it. Thank you uh, for a fantastic talk, David. And I'm um, applauding on behalf of the uh, audience. Um, and uh, you can continue to send any questions to me. Uh, I'll start with um, one, one question. Um, throughout the talk today, you touched on 
a uh, number of um, small turning points or, or or things that served as inspirations for you. Um, talks uh, you had, uh, visits or collaborations, the summer schools. Um, so a lot of these um, smaller opportunities. Um, as you uh, were progressing through, were you searching actively searching out for those things, or or did um, or would you consider this uh, more serendipitous and taking advantage of of things that that came along? Um, largely seeking out, I, I would say one of one one of the reasons I decided to emphasize these things is because I think I think these 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 events and you know these pe these people that inspire you um, really play a huge role in the trajectory of, of, of your career. Um, but in my experience, they, they, they don't happen serendipitously and, and, uh, you, you, you have to make them happen. So, um, it was really like really seeking out, um, seeking them out. Great. Yeah. Great. Thank you.